Hey, I'm Kevin with Acteon. First off, congratulations on your new SoPro Life camera. This is one of Acteon's diagnostic cameras. This is a fantastic camera. This has um, our diagnostic feature that features two levels of caries detection. This camera is phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and in this video show you how to make the best of this camera, how to use this camera to its full capabilities. So first off, let's start with the actual camera itself, itself the, the physicalness of the camera. Up top here, you're going to notice the lens. That's the little square in the center here. Around the lens, this horseshoe shape, that's the LED array. So we have a mixture of bright light, uh, bright white LEDs, as well as blue LEDs in there. So the bright white LEDs are what are going to be used to capture what we call the daylight mode. Um, that's just going to be a normal intraoral image, right? A nice bright intraoral image. The blue LEDs are what we use when we're in the caries detection mode. So all of that is housed in this area. You want to be very careful not to get any moisture under the lens. All right. Really, this portion from pretty much from here to here of this camera has no need to ever get wet, right? Um, you're going to be barriering this camera. You're going to have a sheath over it when you're using it in a patient's mouth. Uh, that's part of our instructions as well as the CDC guidelines. So uh, you want to make sure that um, all of this is barriered. And at that point, really, there's not any need to do anything else with the lens as far as like a cabicide wipe or any other um, anything else that would put moisture underneath the, underneath the lens. So be mindful that um, you don't want moisture under the lens. Now, on the back side, working our way down from the head, this is the SoPro Touch feature. Now, some brands, uh, some camera manufacturers put buttons, and the button is used to capture an image. Uh, we don't have a button. Instead, we have a touch feature. So Buttons are great, right? People are used to pushing buttons, but look what happens when you push a button. The head's moving, all right? A blurry image is going to be generated when you have a fast-moving head like this. And so that's not what we want. We don't want blurry images. We want nice, crisp, clear images. And you're not going to get that with a button, but you will get that with our SoPro Touch feature. So instead of actually pushing a button, you're literally just swiping in this area. Imagine a smartphone, the way you activate it with just your finger, how you're swiping around. It's the same thing. So with that in mind, though, keep in mind, any sort of contact in this vicinity, um, when the camera is on and when your software is in the acquiring mode, when you're, when you're uh, able to take photos, uh, will translate to sending uh, telling essentially the software that hey, I want to capture an image. So you know if you're just moving it around like so This is all all of this movement. I'm doing here would translate into uh, Capturing an image. So just be mindful that uh, Whenever you want to get an image you simply just make contact in this vicinity uh, but that also means that uh, Mishandling of the camera could result in multiple images, but it's not a big deal If you get an image you don't like you just delete it. No big deal. Now, moving down from that, this is our uh, focal ring. So this right here is where a lot of the magic is. So um, you'll notice that there are a series of dots on here, a big dot all the way down to a little dot. So this is what adjusts the focal length of the camera. So what that means is that um, Certain things will be in focus and certain things will be out of focus depending on where this dot and where this line lines up. So uh, imagine if you wanted to do, for example, a face photo, that's going to have the camera further away from you than you would be if you're doing a smile. So you need to change the focal length to uh, make sure that you are in the right position for the face photo or for a smile. So the best way to really think about it is um, with perspective, right? Something that's further away from you, right? So, you know, if you've got uh, your phone, for example, right? When it's really close to you, it's big. When it's far away from you, it's smaller. The same thing works here. So 
Uh, if it's further away from the camera, it's going to be smaller. So the small circle is your face, right? The next circle in line here, so right now it's lined up for a face photo. This is going to be the ideal position for um, a smile, an arch, a section, uh, um, you know, sort of a, a full tooth but a little bit further away. Uh, that is what this is. So the majority of what you're going to be using the camera for will be in this section. All the way to the right here, the big dot, this is macro vision. This is where you're getting 115 times magnification. So using it, you, uh, using the camera with the big dot, you're literally putting it directly on the tooth surface and you're going to get cracks um, and, and, and all sorts of things that you would never be able to see with the naked eye at 115 times magnification. It's really incredible to see. Uh, patients love it. You're, you're going to show them things that they never ever be able to see elsewhere. Um, now, you'll notice I did jump a position and that would be right here, right in line with the label and in this case it's a little blue line. This is the section that you want to be on when you're using the diagnostic features. So this camera has the caries detection and the caries detection uses our blue LED lights. Now um, the normal ambient light in a room will render it very difficult for the camera to capture a nice uh, clear image. That's why we include four of these autoclavable reusable hoods. So you want to autoclave these after each patient. There's four of them in your box and it's simple. You slide them right on the end here and boom. Now what you've done here is two things. One, it is you, you going, you're going to want to put the um, head right on this hood, right on the tooth. So now you'll notice here uh, the hood itself is blocking out any ambient light. Not only that, but it is the distance here and this position all translate into the exact perfect distance for the ideal focal length to get the most crisp, clear shot. So using it in this mode here is the correct focal length with the hood. Right. So one more time, down the center is where you're going to be using the hood uh, with the caries detection. So once you've entered in the center port and you have the hood on, that's when we can activate the caries detection. And that is right here. So we have a one and we have a two. Now when you push the buttons, you're gonna notice that if you are not in a mouth, right, and if you're just um, you're just using the camera, let's just say, in face mode, right, and you push button one, everything's going to go kind of purple, right? The camera's not broken, but you'll find that on the bottom corner, there's going to be the number, little Roman numeral of one, that tells you you are in caries mode. That's normal. Caries mode, everything will look kind of purple until you are up close on the tooth using the hood. At that point in time, everything makes sense, right? So when you are in the right mode with the hood using the caries detection on a tooth, you're going to find that the tooth structure is going to be a, one of three colors, okay? Uh, you're going to have either green, that's going to be healthy natural tooth structure, or you're going to find areas of red uh, or levels of red that's going to be decay. The other thing you will have is white. That's going to be like a crown or anything else that's just not a tooth. Um, so if you if you have somebody with a crown and you put this on, it's just going to look white because it's not a, a, a natural tooth structure. So uh, that is where you're going to be and, and how you're going to use the diagnostic tools or the diagnostic uh, buttons. So you have two. You have one and you have two. The way that this works is level one is really meant to be used to uh, identify the caries, all right? So when you're um, using it in the patient's mouth and you're showing them on the screen live, uh, you're going to want to be in level one. 
That's where you're going to find the caries. That's where you're going to show the caries to the patient. Uh, and this is where you're going to do your, uh, you're going to use the camera for your case acceptance. Once the patient has said yes, and you're going to treat the caries, that's when you're going to be in level two. That's our caries detection, uh, or that's our treatment mode. So um, it's going to be a little bit more intense because in some cases, the caries will not be on the surface, but rather a little bit deeper in. And so that's why we have the level two. It's a little bit more intense. Um, and so you're going to use this to uh, make sure that when you're removing the decay, that it, you've removed it completely. So you want to take a nice before and an after photo uh, for insurance as well as for the patient and your records. Um, and, and this helps you so that you're only removing the decay and not natural healthy tooth structure. So once you've gone into one of these modes, if you push the button again, it gets you out of the mode. So anytime on the screen where the image is appearing, uh, you see a number, a Roman number of one or two in the bottom corner, that means you're on that particular caries mode. If there's no number in the bottom corner, that means you're on normal white daylight mode. Um, and those will actually save to the image you take. This way, when you go back and refer to the image, you know how that image was taken. Um, so that's the diagnostic features here. And then you've got the autoclavable, the four autoclavable hoods that come with each camera. On the bottom side, uh, this is where the dock connects. So this is our mini dock right here. Um, you're going to have two ends, right? This end plugs to your computer. This end plugs to your camera. That's a standard USB. Now, it's very possible that you might not actually have this end, or at least visible, and that's because this end is built, this whole cable is built into your delivery unit, and it's simply hanging off your delivery unit. No problem. You still have this end. It's just in the delivery unit somewhere. So really, this is the part that we're talking about, and this is what matters. Um, this end connects to the back of the camera and you'll notice in the camera at the very bottom there there's a little notch that also lines up with the little notch here um, for the most part though the way I do it you'll notice is I just sort of place it on I don't even have any pressure I'm just spinning it and you'll find oop, falls into place boom push it in clip it in good to go uh, at that point in time it's it's locked in there it's not going anywhere um, and and you are connected to the dock so to disconnect it, you don't want to pull it from here, right? That's not going to do you any good. You actually want to pull it from this ring that spins, this plastic piece here. You simply pull down and it disconnects. The way that works is you'll notice um, there are little teeth that disengage when you pull that down and that re-engage uh, when the camera is clipped in. So that's how you do it. Super easy. Uh, you do want to make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that you barrier the camera. We have two types of barriers. We have a barrier that literally runs the entire length of this sheath, and then we have a barrier that only covers this much. This is the barrier you want to have for this particular camera. This full length barrier is for our 617 camera, which is not this camera and is not going to fit correctly on your camera you want to use this barrier. This barrier is part number 20941, and you can purchase it from, from pretty much any of the dealers. Um, so the, the way that this works is there are four pieces of material here. You have a plastic outer sheath, which um, just protects the barrier itself, and that's where this Acteon label is. You also have a paper backing, and then in the middle, you have two pieces of plastic, um, and that is the actual barrier. So you have the outer, the upper barrier, and then you have the lower end of the barrier. So what you want to do here is have the barrier paper side down and put the lens paper side down into the barrier. So simply like so. Now, um, I like to grab it by the paper, and you're just going to push straight up. So you just push it all the way in, and you'll notice the barrier, it, it is in, right? So this is all that it's covered. From here, the rest of it is just simply kind of pushing through. Um, so 
that's all that needs to be sheathed. That's all that needs to be covered. You don't want to obviously cover the focal ring because then you won't be able to have access to it. And you're not putting anything more than this in the patient's mouth. You want to make sure you use the Actium barriers for two major reasons. One, you'll notice it fits perfectly, right? It's intended for this camera. The other reason is uh, in here, and the other reason why you need to put this on in a specific way with paper side down is because uh, there's an anti-fogging agent built into the actual uh, sheath itself. So, um, you know, when your patients are breathing on it, it's not going to fog up. So it's very important that you use the Acteon barriers for uh, a nice, crisp, clear image. So see, it's nice and tight on the lens here. Otherwise, if you're using a barrier that was a little bit loose, you know, you're going to get sort of like if I kind of pull it off like so. Some barriers that are third party are going to be loose like that, and that's going to translate into a blurry image. Now, another thing, when you're putting the barrier on, you notice there is a seam on either side. If you slide it in angled in any sort of way, that seam will end up on the lens, kind of like this, right? Uh, that's going to translate into the seam showing up in all your photos, and you don't want that. Right. You want to make sure that you do put it on so that the seams are on the side and that it's not compromising the image quality itself. So uh, then to pull it off. It's great. You just grab it from here and you pull directly up. The sheath turns inside out so all of the um, germs, I guess, are on the inside. So it's safe. You just throw it away. Uh, you, can, you don't need to red bag it. This is simply uh, trash and then good to go. If you wanted to wipe the camera down, because obviously this part wasn't bared, sure, you can wipe the back side, and then of course you can wipe pretty much from here down. I would use a um, cavi wipe or an optum wiper or just a mild uh, detergent, and you could wipe that down. Um, but for the most part, that's it. That's the camera. Um, super easy to use, super intelligent. This is a fantastic camera uh, to use, and you want to make sure that you're using this with every patient because um, it's very difficult for a patient to fully understand a, uh, an x-ray, a radiograph, when they're looking at their, protect, uh, their caries, but it's super easy for them to understand when you're using the SoPro Care camera because green and red, we all drive cars, green is go, red is stop. This translates it, uh, all the caries into something that is super easy for them to understand and this is going to help you with your case acceptance tremendously. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to give us a call. Um, you can reach me if you are in the state of Florida. Otherwise, you can reach your local Acteon rep or call our customer service department. So congratulations. Enjoy. Have a great night.